Exercise 12b, solving simultaneous equations. Now, from your very, very elementary sort of high school algebra, you might know that if I had 2x is equal to 10, 2 times x equals 10, what does x equal to? What we would normally do is divide by 2 and find that x is equal to 5. Well, when I'm wanting to find an unknown thing for matrices, well, remember, we cannot divide matrices. So this is when we apply the understanding of using an inverse matrix in substitution for a uh, division. So we've got an example here of a convoluted simultaneous equations problem where we're trying to find uh, the number of adults, students and pensioners. Uh, we're going to find the cost. So it says here uh, for 12B.1, at the Glen Midden Way Cinema, there are three types of tickets, adults A, uh, students S and pensioners P. Ticket prices vary depending on if they arrive in groups or if it's tight Tuesday. On Monday, there was a school group of 90 students, 30 adults and 12 pensioners. On Tuesday, there was 50 adults, 20 pensioners and 6 students. On Wednesday, there was 50 pensioners, 3 adults and 7 students. Monday's ticket revenue was 2500 Tuesday's ticket revenue was 1500 and Wednesday's ticket revenue was 900 What is the price for each ticket? Now, uh, there is a thing in the question where there's, where their variety depends on whether groups or tight Tuesday. I'm assuming by this question that we're trying to find an average price, but that's fine. We've been told that we've got adults, students, and pensioners. So I'm going to write my first uh, equation like this. So you can see here for the Monday, there were 30 adults, 90 students, and 12 pensioners, and that got us a revenue of $2,500. Let's do the same for Tuesday and for Wednesday. I've now described the information as simultaneous equations. I made sure also to line up all of the variables, all one underneath each other. And some people might think that I'm being a little bit pedantic, but if you've ever done simultaneous equations by elimination, you'll know why I've done that. But also uh, it's very important when we show how you can do this using matrices. So here's a horrific glimpse of how it would look like if we did it by hand. Thankfully, for the purposes of further mathematics, you are not at all required to have to solve simultaneous equations by hand. But otherwise, it is a little bit revolting having to do all those horrible fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to show how we set it up using the CAS and in, uh, using matrix methods. So once we've got our established equation, what we're going to do is going to write it as a matrix equation. And it looks something like this. So here's our matrix equation. You'll notice that I've put all of the numbers just on their own into one square matrix there. And then I've put the letters ASP one after the other in a column matrix. Now, the reason why it's important to, to note here is that no, we need to make sure we get our letters right. The letters from left to right have to be the same as going from top to bottom in this column. And then the final matrix is all of our totals. Now, essentially what we'd want to do in an ideal world is we'd want to divide both sides by this matrix here, this 30, 90, 12 matrix. If we divide both sides, then we'd find out what A, S and P are. But we cannot divide matrices. So what we do instead is we multiply by the inverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the inverse of this, and I could do this on the CAS. So I've typed all of the numbers into the CAS, and then I just need to find the inverse. And you see that I've got the all as fractions at the moment. I'm gonna keep it like that, primarily because if I put it onto decimal, you get these horrible, big, inf infinite decimal places. And then all I need to do is multiply by that final matrix. The final answer will be those two matrices multiplied. So I'm going to go into the CAS, highlight and copy that matrix that we found the earlier, the, the, the one that we found the inverse of. I'm going to multiply it by that column matrix, the final answer one. So it should have 
2,500, 1,500, and 900. Now we get our numbers all in fraction form because I've still got it on standard. I'm just going to go and set it to decimal. And since we want dollars and cents, we can say we can round it to two decimal places. So the final answer, the way that we would describe it, is that we need to specify what is what. So I'm going to say the adult is equal to $22.15. The students are equal to $18.52. And the pensioners equal to $14.08. It's important to write your answers fully like that because if you just put an answer that is the final matrix, so for instance, the final matrix is 22.15, 18.52, 14.08, 18.52, 22.15, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 18.52, 